Whenever I ask my learners, how do you multiply a number by 10? The answer always comes back, add a note on the end. And for some people that is their one and only rule. And it does work in some circumstances. But as they soon find out, not in every case. We need to dig a little bit further and that's exactly what we're going to do here. I'm going to start with a whole number. Any old number will do and for no particular reason I've chosen 37. Now the first thing we need to realize is that when we are writing a whole number, although we do not see a decimal point anywhere, it's just 37, that decimal point does exist whether we can see it or not, and it belongs just there. We don't say in a whole number simply because it doesn't make sense. If I asked someone their age, they would not say I'm 37.0, they would just say 37. But 37.0 is exactly what we've written. And we need to realise this because in order to multiply and divide by 10 or 100 or 1000, we do it by moving that decimal point. And recognising that's where it starts is the first step. So let's have a look at this. If our sum were going to be 37 times 10, what we do is we look at the number 10 and we say, right, how many zeros are there there? There's just the one. That tells us that what we need to do is to take that decimal point and move it one place and we go to the right. In other words, that decimal point that started there jumps across and ends up there. We've now got a space and the rule for having a space is that we fill it with a zero. So by doing that, 37 times 10 equals 370. Now let's go back to the situation we were in before. Let's just get rid of the arrow there and get rid of the zero and let's put the decimal point back where it started because I'm now going to try 37 but not times 10 we're going to do 37 times 100 same process how many zeros are there in 100 there are two zeros therefore this time the decimal point is going to move one two places so it's going to move from where it is all the way across here. Now we have two gaps, one here and one here, so we fill those gaps with zeros. Therefore 37 times 100 equals 3700. And so it goes on. If I were to multiply 37 times 1000, I would do exactly the same. One, two, three, Therefore, the decimal point in this case would move one, two, three places, an extra spot. It would end up there and the gap would be filled with yet another zero. So we start by knowing where the decimal point is to start with and a whole number. It's always on the end. And as we are multiplying by 10 or 100 or 1000, we count the number of zeros, and that is how many places we move the decimal point. So now that we can multiply, in order to learn how to divide, we just realise that division is just the opposite of multiplication. So the first thing we might want to do is 37 divided by 10. The decimal point, I put back where it is, at the end of the 37, we follow exactly the same procedure. How many zeros are there in 10? One. So the decimal point moves one place that way and therefore it ends up in the centre there. So that must mean that 37 divided by 10 equals 3.7. Let's take it a stage further again. I'll just remove the arrow. So 
let's put the decimal point back that started and let's have a look at 37 divided by 100. How many zeros are there in 100? 1, 2, therefore decimal point, 1 place, 2 places and ends up there. Now in this case, 0.37, that's okay. You do hear people say 0.37, but we tend to say 0 0.37. Therefore, it looks better if we put a zero on the beginning. Now, let's just take this one one step further to, further to have a look at these uh, zeros, because the next thing you would do would be 37 divided by 1,000. Now again, to start this, I'm going to put the point back where it started. And let's just for the moment, get rid of the zero. Now, let's have a look at this. One, two, three zeros, 37 divided by a thousand. So the decimal point is off on its journeys again. One, two, three. Let's just trace that to make it clear. It went from there one place, two places, three places. Now, what we have here is a space which we fill with zero, just the same as when we were multiplying. But again, because the decimal point is there, we go with a zero there as well. So the answer is not point, not three, seven. One more step. I'm this time going to put a number, let's say 514.26. No differences here whatsoever, except that now the decimal point is in the middle of a set of digits and the rule remains exactly the same. To multiply by 10, we go to there. To multiply by 100, it goes twice. 1,000, it goes again and a naught gets added on. So multiply goes in this direction with the decimal point. Division, well to divide by 10, you'd go from there to there. Divide by 100, you'd go there. And divide by 1000, you would go there. And if necessary, put a naught on the end there. So division or divide is that direction there. Let's have a summary then before we finish when we are multiplying or we are dividing by 10. The decimal point moves one place because there's one zero. If you are multiplying or dividing by 100 because there are two zeros, it moves two places thousand would be three and so on and so on. So there, a set of rules for dividing and multiplying by any round number and hopefully the add a naught on the end has been put well and truly to bed. Cheers.